Welcome to a, um, a video reading of the chapter 1944, A Reason. Uh, we were actually using QuickTime Player um, with Snow Leopard for the very first time rather than GarageBand. So we'll see how uh, this works vis-a-vis uh, -vis GarageBand. It's, it's a little bit quicker to open, a little bit simpler to get started, uh, although it doesn't give you the editing uh, features obviously that a a program like GarageBand uh, can. So we'll we'll see how this works and uh, maybe uh, maybe this won't be the last time. So I'm going to attempt to do something which is uh, perhaps not uh, done often, and I'm not sure how this is going to work. Which is to read uh, dialogue from two characters back to back without trying to change voice to, to mimic who is saying what and I, I hope that the reader simply will be able to pick up um, the back and forth. So without further ado, a reading of 1944, A Reason. And it starts with setting of the scene, Mary and Virgil step out of the ambulance. This of course is upon their first um, rendezvous, their first uh, get-together, their first meeting. And we hear their feet crunching snow, the fresh snow which has been steadily falling, and again we see the plume of their breath, you know, reaching out, touching, as their arms lace behind their back. So that's the scene. And um, one editorial note to, to tie this into a previous chapter, you may remember when they first met outside the ambulance. Um, Virgil makes the claim that he doesn't um, he doesn't know what this is. And uh, so after the events inside the ambulance they come back out, they embrace, and Mary takes him back to this statement that he made upon which there was not a lot of discussion. She simply said that she knew. Uh, but there was no explanation as to what they were talking about. And so now that the quote-unquote event has occurred, she's going to come back to, and this is where the dialogue starts with Mary, as she says, you said you didn't know what this was. What did you mean? And Virgil responds, things are not always as they appear, as this, as, as this is not. What is it then, if not what it appears? I don't know. Is that supposed to make me feel better? I'm not trying to make you feel anything. You asked a question. I gave an answer. No, you gave me some mumble jumble. Look, I'm I'm not going to say I love you. Well, that's very brave of you. Mary, I've seen a lot of brave things. This is this is not one of them. Then what is it? What was this? Can you tell me that? No, I, I can't explain it. I can't tell you what this was, but I can tell you that there's something more. There's something more here. Like what? Something beyond? Beyond anything I've known before? How do you know? How do you know this? How do you stand here and say that? A few days ago in hospital, the first time I saw you, when you turned, I saw your profile and I saw your eyes. I knew. What, Virgil? What, what did you know, Virgil? What did you know? I knew you were different. I knew you were different from this war. 
as different as one could be. Talk to me. Tell me what that means. It means when I saw you, when I saw you, Mary, I saw everything. I saw life. I saw reason. For what? A reason for what? To live. And so this is where this chapter stops in the continuing saga between Virgil and Mary and trying to understand what has occurred here. What has occurred here beyond what it appears to be on the surface, which is two people and in the midst of a horrific event, finding some reprieve, some comfort in each other's arms. And so uh, hopefully the story will continue to move forward and continue to explore, to peel back the layers, so to speak, in some sense of understanding what does it mean what what did Virgil mean and what did Mary mean and what did the two of them mean when they understood that this was something different that it was something more and how does that occur how does it occur when you see somebody for the first time how does it occur when you capture a look in the eye or you see somebody smile for the first time and it means something. And how's, how is that? How does that occur? How does that um, become what it is? In this case, an event that forever changes, at least for Mary, because Mary survives and Virgil doesn't. It forever changes her life, not just for the day, not for the week, or even the year, but for the rest of her life that there was something here that could do that. And that's what this story, uh, this, this brief encounter, and everything that revolves around it, because this is really the centerpiece where we have explored both something before and then again something after. But that's what this is. So thanks for listening, or watching as the case may be, and I'll see you on the blog.